Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. We have uh, experienced now, as of this week, the 34th day this year with markets hitting an all-time high. We actually, here in the middle of the week and into the later part of the week, had a little bit of downside volatility, but it's such a stretch to even say that when people start talking about 20, 30, 40 points in the Dow um, representing like a, a reversal. But you know, when you have eight or nine in a row uh, days higher, I guess anything can be called a reversal. But I mean, right now I'm sort of forced to watch the media and uh, other uh, financial punditry stretch themselves in a rather awkward game of gymnastics to make a story out of anything. But, but the reality is, is that the markets have actually been quite boring, and yet there's um, a lot happening in the world that is anything but boring. Particularly this week, we had a lot of flare-ups in the rhetoric surrounding North Korea. Uh, markets largely shrugged it off to the extent that someone wants to think a 30 or 40 point drop in the Dow may be related to the threat of nuclear war. Um, I suppose they might have an interesting perspective on what exactly the fear would be that a nuclear war would represent 30 points in the Dow seems a bit odd. So either perhaps that 30 points had nothing to do with nuclear war or we're underestimating the impact that a nuclear war may have on the markets. If you detect some sarcasm in my voice, you're, uh, you're astute. It, uh, the sarcasm is warranted because there's some rather silly analysis floating around. Um, what we do have is a market that is high in price. And when uh, someone brings up 34 days we've hit an all-time high, there's a couple of different reactions you could have. You could say, geez, it seems like it's high. I don't want to come into this market where I want to peel back my exposures to this market. That's a reasonable emotional response. The problem is it would have been, it may be right now, it would have been wrong 33 other days, obviously. Um, but then I think it warrants the reminder of the lesson I've been talking about for quite some time, and, and nobody argues it. It's, it's mathematical, it's very logical, and it isn't totally intuitive until you hear it think through it, and then you go, okay, that's, that makes sense. Every point that the market has ever been at was at one point an all-time high. So calling the market an all-time high is not a statement about the value or the cheapness or the expensiveness uh, or the lack of value of the market. It's just merely an uh, empirical statement. Um, I, I post this at DividendCafe.com this week, but did you, under, did you know that there have been 122 days that the market was at an all-time high in the three years before 2017. So we're, we're talking about just a season of new highs being made. We've been in a very secular bull market for quite some time. And it forces us to grapple with a couple of different issues. First of all, the folly of market timing, the unbelievable damage that had been done to an incredible amount of investors who chose to give in to these fears. Um, we, we most definitely are sensitive to the realities that markets can drop at any time. Markets can get frothy. Markets do get frothy. Markets will get frothy, meaning they will get overcooked and they will end up being subject to a correction. Whether that be a 1, 2, or 3% correction or a more substantive one, including a bear market, which as much as a 20% drop in markets. Um, these things are realities for equity market investors. They are also intrinsically untimable, and significantly more money has been lost by people trying to time them than anything else. But, but that doesn't help the fact that people have need for return, financial goals that need to be met from a risk premium they derive from an investment portfolio, and yet people also have uh, psychological and emotional and human fears and anxieties around the volatility of their money value. So we remedy that not through the impossibility of market timing, but through the discipline and process of asset allocation, turning our knobs up and down to blend risk and reward from exposure to stocks, bonds, cash, real estate alternatives, uh, and other such investment assets that are driving around different uh, potential downsides, potential rewards, and of course, the cash flows we care about from the underlying investment assets. We're in a position right now where there's a heavy temptation of market time. The heavy conversation about that temptation is one of the reasons I happen to think the market very likely has a lot more room to go because of the fact 
that the euphoria and irrational exuberance that normally marks a, a market top is incredibly lacking right now. Um, there is an uh, extraordinary amount of doubt and skepticism around this market. But all that to say, there's plenty of reasons I could see for how markets could correct. Um, my point is not to ever say, no, the markets will not correct, they will go higher. My point is to say that we don't know when that will happen. And neither do you, and neither does anybody else. So therefore, the right solution morally, not to mention economically, is to A, not pretend that we do, and B, to position our client's portfolio in line with their actual goals and tolerance for volatility. Risk is something we view as the possibility of permanently eroding your capital. We aggressively manage money to keep that from happening. Volatility is the up and down movements that can take place, including 10% corrections in the stock market. So we need to weight client portfolios to allow for their comfort levels surrounding such volatility. Now, I'm giving a lot of just basic review here about philosophy of managing money, about the realities of risk and return, um, but it's also timely in the sense that we can bring up any kind of headlines, we can bring up price levels in the market. Um, there is always the fear of valuations getting too high, in which case we do want to turn knobs tactically to, to account for where those risk rewards embedded in an asset class may have altered. But fundamentally, we are looking at growing cash flows in companies and deriving a lot of confidence in our ability to generate a return for long-term goals from the long-term process. Along the way, we want to add value, both in minimizing risk and adding return, where we can tactically uh, monitor such valuations. But in this particular case, as far as the whole market, I want to, I want to be in the market, I want to be out of the market, timing that and so forth. I would allude to the 34 days this year and the 122 days of the last several years to point out that um, it would have been a very foolhardy errand. And, and at this point in time, when the next 5 to 10% correction comes, all the people that spent all of 2016, 15, 13, 12, blah, 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 say the exact same thing, have now no chance of ending up being right, even when we get a 5 to 10% correction because the market is so far and away above the last point at which they were spewing the same fear and concern. So it is uh, understandable temptation to want to lower our own risk and control our own anxiety by market timing. But market timing adds to anxiety because it isn't going to be done right. It's going to make things worse. And then you'll have more to worry about. But asset allocation and driving a fundamental discipline process is the right way to go. This is practically not even a weekly dividend cafe. This little vignette today is almost evergreen in the message of it, but I plead with you to listen to it, reach out with any questions, and know for those of you listening who are clients of the Bonson Group that we would literally move mountains to make sure you understand this message and appreciate it, and that we, well, I don't think that's literal. I think we mean figuratively we would. Okay, I guess I've said enough. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. Forward this message around to anyone you want. It's an important one.